Hello, patrons, and welcome to a very special episode of Night Parade. A little over a year ago, we decided to start off this podcast with one of Fenris's favorite anime. Unfortunately, the video got corrupted and never saw the light of day. But here we are, a year later, with new arts and assets, a fuller team, and a little more experience under our belts. I'm Fat Man. I'm Fenris. I'm Kuroko. And tonight, we're reviewing Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju, Seasons 1 and 2. Oh, it's been so long. I think it's been about a month since we've done one of these. Hmm, what was the last thing we did? That is a good question, my sir. Was it... Shimonetta? It might have been Shimonetta. I think the last one I was a part of was the Halloween special. No, we did Red Line after that, didn't we? No, I think we did Red Line before that, didn't we? Yeah. Because we did Red Line. Oh, right, we re-recorded it. I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, we re-recorded Red Line? Mm-hmm. Because I messed yeah. up the audio the first time through. Fuck, I didn't even realize we re-recorded it. Yeah. It just never fucking crossed my damn mind. Well... This has been on the list for quite a while. As we said, this is the first one we ever tried recording. Oh, I've been wanting to cover this for so long! Is that because you enjoyed it? It's... To be quite honest, this has become one of my favorite animes. Like, of all time. It's just... Oh... I guess we should explain what it is yeah. before we get into it. Yeah. I hadn't heard about this show. I, I I say that a lot during these openings, but you keep introducing me to shows that are so amazing that I'm punching myself I've never heard of. At this point, it's tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's once a, a month. Other times uh, so I, I suggest something and you're like, no, please, God, no. <laughs> Fully coolie. Uh, also, a uh, mysterious girlfriend axe. Oh yeah, that was a fucking nightmare. You got me into this show, Fenris. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little about Rakugo. So, Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju is a anime about theater and artists who perform theater, but a specific style of performing known as Rakugo. Which is one-man theater, kind of like a stand-up comedian, but they're sitting down and telling a story. Sometimes comedic, sometimes not. Sometimes bone-chilling. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes you want to cry your eyes out. But Shoua Genroku Rakugo Shinju is about an ex-con who really wants to do this for a living. And an old man who really... Wants nothing to do with pretty much anything. Yeah, right? he, he he's not a people person. Not a fan of pretty much anything. At this point, he's the pretty much the face of the Rakugo community, and he wants it to die with him. <laughs> yeah, he's like fuck this, fuck everything. Most of all, fuck you. And here comes this Yotaro, this lovable fool that just oozes with enthusiasm for theater. Yeah. And asks to become his apprentice. They're like two directly opposing sides. Oil and water. Yeah. Peanut butter and jelly. Hey, hey. Peanut butter and jelly is great together. Peanut butter and chocolate. <clears throat> Maybe. Have you ever re-eaten a Reese's Pieces? I hate I'm... Reese's Pieces. I, over I overdosed on them one Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> They're my least favorite candy. I, I hate peanut I, butter and chocolate. I do have a theory on what this series is about with my overly analytical mind. What is it? Because I... I can give a more eloquent answer, but that's just the basics. Well, 
what I was take what I took away from the series is it's about passing the torch to a new generation, but it's also about accepting death and what you've left behind. That's what I took away from it. Yeah, Ooh. and your legacy. The, uh... Because death seems to be a very big theme throughout the series. Death is a major theme in the series. Death, stuff about death is straight up in the title. Yeah. The short, uh, short synopsis I wrote of it was Rakugo is a tale of tradition, inheritance, and the art of storytelling. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's true as well. It's about a lot of things. Hmm? Yeah. It really depends on the character you focus on in it. What is the translation of the, the title? I, I forget sometimes. Oh, shit, you guys... Do you... I... Hold on, let me... Cause I know it, but it, not off the top of my head because I am... I may be a weeb, but I'm not that big of an air, a weeb. It was... But it's Showa and Genroku era... Lovers suicide through Rakugo? Showa and Genroku. Showa era being the time frame in which post world reconstruction Japan, as well as part of the war. Mm hmm. Yeah. Which is an accurate description of Yakumo's time. And Genroku being a period, an era in Japan of enlightenment and enriching the arts and cultures. Oh, then Rakugo, of course, being the theater, and Shinju being double suicide? Yeah, well, lovely <laughs> suicide, which <laughs> needs no explanation if you've well, seen it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's in the title. Yeah, it's straight up in the title. <laughs> which is why the, the series lops right into this right in there. Uh, you guys know how weird my brain functions, so this series reminds me of the opening song to the show, well, not the show MASH, but the movie MASH. Okay. Uh, the lyrics basically are, suicide is painless, it brings on many changes, and I will take or leave it if I please. The show reminds me of that for some reason. Interesting. Harrison. Honestly, I take it. Because you can't talk about their show without talking about death and quite possibly suicide, because they're both major themes within it. Yeah. I mean, there's at least one. Yeah, yeah, Yakumo's suicidal. Yeah, he's been trying to kill himself or thinking about killing himself ever since, well, the double suicide. Yeah. Uh, ever since he did not kill those people, but still gets blamed for it anyway. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Yakumo's... Honestly, Yakumo's one of my favorite characters in anime. Mostly because Yakumo is just... He, he, he doesn't care. Like, he just doesn't give a fuck. About pretty much anything. Yeah. Well, except Rakugo. Yeah. And but... Suke Roku. Yeah. Neopichi. But other than that, I don't think he really gives a fuck about anything. And maybe a smoking habit, but... A <laughs> <laughs> <His> smoking habit. <laughs> Listen, when is he not seen smoking other than when he's performing? That's what, that's what I was going to say. When it's performing. And now, remind me, because I'm pretty sure I remember this, but mm -hmm. they neither of them, the characters we see in the first episode, where they take you back to World War II era Japan, yeah. neither of them served in World War II, correct? Or did oh, they? Uh, Suke Roku technically served. Okay. He was an entertainer for the troops. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, but they weren't, like, soldiers, or... No. Okay, no. gotcha. I don't think they would have let, uh, Kikuhiko serve anyway with that bum leg. Oh, yeah. right, I forgot about that. wouldn't serve at all. Okay. He was at, it was actually a major plot point of him being left behind and feeling like he's not... Like he had to leave behind the arts, and his friend got to 
not. Yeah. We we're talking an awful lot about characters without listing them, guys. Yeah, we are. This is gonna get confusing. <laughs> yeah. I remember the shit show we had the first time around. Cause There's so many characters. Because in Rocky Go. When you become a performer and start performing on stage, you receive a stage name. And as you advance up the ranks of Rakugo, you either inherit or choose new names. So, <laughs> there are a lot of characters in this show with the same name. Or different names. Yeah. Rakugo is... From what I understand about it, I don't understand a lot, but from what I understand about it, it's a form of storytelling that is passed down from one generation to another. Like, sort of like how myths are passed down from generation to generation. Ah, yeah. uh, myths. Yeah. Theater. Well, that's all myths are, stories. Yeah. So, it is all myths are. No, but I, I do, I do really like the way the storytelling in this series is structured. Like most shows with theater, you don't really get to indulge in performances. Yeah. Yeah. You see the right? preparation, a little bit of the performance itself, and then the aftermath, and yeah. you just get to see so much of. The storytelling in this it i've i've forgotten i've been watching an anime at times i just get so soaked into these stories yeah and it's it's nice to watch something that isn't a shonen jump series god i'm sick of those <laughs> if you hang around me and the, we i don't watch a lot of shonen right fat man i don't think you've recommended much shonen to me or even much action. I, when I recommend action, it's either weird or gratuitously violent. I'm probably the most indulgent in shonen here. <laughs> like, like an old friend of mine tried to get me into Naruto. I couldn't do it. Yeah. They tried to get me into. They tried to get me into Bleach. I couldn't do it. Um, you yeah. fat man tried to get me into One Piece. I couldn't do it. <sighs> yeah. But we are. But we are on a cruise. We and are, what? we are on the crew. <laughs> I, I just, I, the only Shonen Jump series I've ever been able to watch is Dragon Ball. And JoJo's. Oh, that's, yeah, and JoJo's. I forget that that's... With Shonen Jump. Yeah, JoJo's is good. But, like, the new JoJo's. Dragon Ball Super... Like, the Ugh. stuff that's coming out now, I, just, I can't stand it. Hero yeah. is good. Oh, right, My Hero Academia. Of course, yes, that's another good one. Sometimes there are good ones, but most of the Dunk time I just strong. can't get into them. Season four I like is ongoing, battle battle and we need to watch anyway. that. Would I Attack know. on Titan be considered Shonen Jump? Yeah, I don't know. Because that's good, too, but... Mm. Gintama! Yeah. Oh, classic. Wait, which one? Gintama. I've never heard of it. It's a comedy that is a parody of all shonen. Oh, okay. I think one of my other friends told me it's, about this. It's it's peak comedy. I love Gintama. Sometimes I undersell it as Japanese South Park, hmm. but it's it's more than Japanese South Park. That is a reference that is lost on me because I was never allowed to watch South Park. It's vulgar. Very vulgar. <laughs> I mean, so is Gintama at yeah. times. Oh, yeah. Gintama is essentially Japanese South Park. And I love it every second of it. But Gintama's also very serious at times. Never have I laughed so hard at a Gintama episode and cried at a Gintama episode than the Yoshiwara in Flames arc. And if... Everybody listening to this is looking for a series that is both equal parts funny and serious, then maybe Rakugo isn't for you, because it's more serious than it is funny. Oh yeah, no. But it's also... It has moments... It has its, it has its comedic moments, yes, but... And moments of, like, great happiness, too. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's very 
serious, no. very dark. It talks it about a, various serious subjects, you know. It is a masterful character. Yes. It, it's my second favorite character piece. Mm-hmm. The first is a lot more episodes. I, I don't understand how this is not more popular. Like, I don't get it. It's not more popular. And I'll allow, it, allow me to explain. Yeah, yeah. Because when this was airing, there was a bunch of mainstream manga and anime getting adapted. Right. Also was in its second season. Ancient Magus Drag was coming up. Oh, uh, yes. As was Made in the Abyss. Which we well, need to cover still. Well, I, I just mean, like, anime drama in general. Like, yeah. I, I, it seems like the more mainstream anime fans like, you action. know, action, like the shonen stuff. And That's not I've me. I've always been more into, like, drama and characterization and serious topics and oh me too dude i i i love me some some good action i love me some shonen but my favorite genres i think are slice of life and drama but most importantly of all mystery and psychological horror mm -hmm. so monster <laughs> that was right up my alley I still need to see that. Which reminds me, I want us to cover it, but here's a suggestion. We all watch it over the year, because it's long. 74 episodes. Yeah. Mm, that's not too bad. Well, I want to watch other anime. It's a bit longer than the Gundam episodes that we'll have coming up. Oh, yes, because you're, you're going to get used to doing one season of, like, 50 episodes. <gasps> Especially when we get to the Universal Century era. Oh my god. Fucking hell. Uh, let's get back on track. Yeah, probably. The characters. The oh, it's a... reason we fucking watch this anime. But it, it, it's an anime podcast, I mean. You're yes, right, it's, this isn't a straight review. This is a podcast format. Yes. yes. <laughs> but, oh shit, where was I? Oh, were we talking about non shonen bullshit? Well, I mean, like, the writing in this series is superb. I don't know if the the Rakugos you see them performing are original, or if they're, like, real... They're real Rakugos. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's probably why they're so good, then. And that's another thing I like. I like it when animes do that where they set it in a historical place and they're trying to like convey to you something about Japanese culture but instead of you know like making up their own stories they just give you the history of it all <laughs> yeah and it's yeah. very accurate and very the authentic the characters may have been fictional but the setting, yes. the history the, the culture all of this is just yeah that's so at, good. Oh. And as a history nerd, I eat that stuff up, so... Oh yeah, me too. I love history. No. I'm a person who genuinely listens to a three-hour-long history podcast. Mm-hmm. Oof, da. And yeah. enjoys it, and listens to the whole thing. This, this is a series, if you're an anime fan who likes, like, accurate historical settings, this is definitely right up your alley. Yeah. So... I guess what started us on this tangent was the discussion of the confusing character names. Yes. So let's go over the characters real quick. Yeah. Our homies. So, who I mentioned as Kikuhiko earlier, that was one of the 8th generation Yakumo's previous Seven. stage names. No, 7th generation. Se no? Yes. Eighth generation. Yeah, is... wait, yeah, you're right. You're right. Eighth generation. Yeah. Seventh generation was Kikuhiko's teacher. Oh yeah, that that butthole. So let's use Yakumo as the generalized name for the old man. He I mean, had... I've been calling him Yakumo since I started this thing. Right. 
<laughs> he earlier he was Bon. He was Kikuhiko. He may have had another name that I can't remember. Oh uh, shit. Kikuhiko I is the old man. All it's all of them. Tsukiroku is his best friend. Tsukiroku's lazy. The, all he does is drink and womanize. He's he's the exact defin like textbook definition of someone who's basically naturally gifted at something or naturally charismatic. Yeah. Right, Kruger? Mm-hmm. And yeah, all he does is drink and women eyes. Well, this is the age before the internet. What do you expect? I'm sorry. That was a <laughs> stupid joke. I'm better than that. <sighs> I mean, it's what I'd have done if I were in person. But that actually leads to one of my favorite moments of the first season. Yeah. Which I'm sure you guys remember, but like, remember when um freaking Yakumo was studying for the upcoming performance of Benton Kozo? Uh, and the play. I, I vaguely remember it, yeah. But so, Suki Goku brought home two girls. Yeah. And Yakumo was like, oh yeah, they can stay. She's like, I got one for you. And Yakumo says, sure, they can stay. But they have to pay, and it's double for girls. <laughs> <laughs> and he basically just cock blocked the both of them because he wanted to get this show. He wanted to be practiced for his role. Yeah, he may have over practiced a bit. I, I mean, that was his character, Yakumo's character, though. I know. Because he n never felt confident in his skills. And he, he doesn't... Like, the old man doesn't seem like he's too interested in sex. Like... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> You'd either think he was gay, or just... Well, he had a thing not... for Miyokichi. I, I, I don't... But did he really... <laughs> I don't think he's gay. I think he's more asexual than anything. That's a good point. But... He didn't seem to want to fuck anything. If he had interests, it was being better than Tsuke Rook. <laughs> right? Yeah. Look at us, talking about characters fucking each other. This show doesn't play into an anime stereotype. Uh, well, I mean... It exists for a reason. <laughs> so, I mean... If they're gonna keep writing about it, I'm gonna keep talking about it. <laughs> but also, Yakumo's inability to basically love someone was major reason the series turned out the way the story turned out the way yeah. it did. Right? Yeah. And there, are, there, there's nobody in this series that's you know married to a nine-year-old girl. See our Iron-Blooded Orphans review if you want more <laughs> info about that. Oh God! I, I don't mean that. <sighs> well, <laughs> there is that uh, that theory that. Oh no! no had. Don't 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 don't! I think I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, guys. I, I'm going to assume it's. It, did the old man have relations with? Konatsu. Konatsu. Yeah. It's no. Slightly... No. Just. Just no. It's 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 a legitimate theory brought forth by one of the characters. Yeah, but no. She's so she 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 has enough problems. <laughs> she doesn't need any more. I mean, if any, at least it's not incest. If Yakumo bangs. No, you're right. It's just pedophilia, which is even worse. <laughs> What if she's 18? You know what? We should stop. You know, I thought the theory was whether or not they had relations be like before she became an adult. Oh, while he was no. raising her. Oh, okay. Then I met, oh, I, God, no. I got the theory. Never mind then. Never mind then. When she announced that she was pregnant in the first season. Oh, okay. We're Oh, that's right. We still don't know who the father is technically. 
Right. We don't know who the right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. okay that makes more sense. I don't think it's him. You don't? I don't. I mean, he's a dead ringer for him in looks. Yeah, well, yeah, but I still don't think it's him. I mean, it could be. But <laughs> that's, that's I, I always, I always thought it was the mob who, boss. Yeah, that's who I thought it was. It looks like the both of them. But in the end, the show made it a point that it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. You still would like to know because tying up loose ends is just what we do. Yeah, but some things are better left a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and this is one of them. So it's heavily implied that they did. So basically what I'm trying to say is, if you raise somebody else's daughter because of their passing or what have you, do not have intercourse with said daughter. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's weird. <laughs> I feel like that's a fucking given, but... Yet there are some people who need to be reminded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need to be reminded. Uh, let's see. Back to characters a bit? Yes. We've talked about Yakimo, Sukiroku, uh, Miyokichi was... Not mentioned. Yakimo's <laughs> love hope. interest, but ended up marrying Sukiroku. Yakimo's what's, love interest married. What's the, what's the girl's name that the old man ended up raising? I can't remember now. Konatsu? Yes. She is the daughter of... Sukiroku and Miyokichi? Yes. Yes. Yakumo raised after their passing. Yep. Yeah, which technically Konatsu caused. caused. Whoops. Did he? She. she oh, she. Her. She. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, she totally caused that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After. God, that revelation was heartbreaking, right? And she still doesn't know. It's, it's one of the few things he took to his grave. Is it bad that if I don't really shed a tear over her death? Over Miyokichi's? Yeah. No, no me she, neither. She's. She was kind of manipulative. Kind of. I didn't like that. She didn't. It all she knew. She was manipulative. She was kind of a drama queen. It was all she knew, and her. Yeah, but, basically yeah. all they knew. And, and, uh, oh my god, guys, I cannot pronounce these names, I'm sorry. <sighs> oh dear. The, the, the Rakugo who died, the... Suke Roku. Roku? Yes, Give him. a few more years of anime watching, you'll get the hang of it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm shit at remembering names, but... <laughs> if you watch Monster, you'll be able to remember names. Well, maybe, yeah. They're in Ger they're either in English or German. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, I mean, he, I'm, I'm not trying to say I didn't like the character. I did like the character, but I mean, he was probably going to die anyway with how much he drank. <laughs> Roku was not on a good trajectory in life. Like, I I'm pretty sure if you listen very, very closely while watching it, you can hear his liver shriveling up. <laughs> <laughs> like, that dude drank like a tanker truck. I didn't... <laughs> Suki Roku drank, he fucked, and told stories. That's all he did. He was overly indulgent. Yes. But... He, he, also he... great, right? Yes. And... The uh, the character that ends up inheriting, like, the rock ago. Yeah, he was in prison when we first met him. Or he was uh, he was getting released from prison. My lovable Yotaro. Yotaro. Now, is it implied that he was, like, Yakuza before? Or just, like, some unnamed gang? Uh, he was straight up Yakuza. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. It's not necessarily implied, but... Well, it's not implied. It's heavily 
Well, I don't remember them saying. They they don't say it, but if if you know the characteristic signs of Yakuza. He's got a yeah. tattoo on his back. He went to prison for his boss. Yeah, that, that's Yakuza. Yep. I'm gonna stop talking about Yakuza before I get in trouble. <laughs> I just want every Yakuza member out there to know I respect you all. I have no beef. <laughs> We're good. Where's your seat? I'm just a white guy who doesn't understand your culture, so I'm completely ignorant and completely harmless. <laughs> just, there you go. <laughs> what he said. Yes. What he said. <laughs> Minus the white guy part. You, you, you don't need to waste your time with me. <laughs> I, I don't want to get iced. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, duh. Then so, again, I haven't heard about anyone getting iced. I, I I hope there are more animes like this. Oh yeah, I know tons. I know a fair amount, dude. Because this is good. I, I enjoyed this. I love this. So, yes. I think Shinigami is the most important Rakugo in this show. Well, thematically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it plays into the plot of the series. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Though, when Suki Roku did Shibihama, it was essentially as an apology for his drinking, his lack of child care. That was a... Getting a very, job. Very touching moment. Mm-hmm. It, it was basically his promise to be... Better. Not a deadbeat. And be there for both his wife and child. Which is a promise he never ended up being able to keep, sadly. Now, now I'm sorry to go off topic real quick here, but... Um, so this is Night Parade. This yeah. is just regular Night Parade, which is usually Fat Man and Fenris. And me and Fat Man do Night Parade Happy Hour. Well, the reason why I am here, I have a theory about this, is because when David suggested that I be a part of this, or Fat Man, sorry, (laughs) force of habit, but he knows that I am a writer, and I like to write, so I'm pretty sure that's why he pulled me into this. Yeah. It's like... Well, I did, because you know me too well. <laughs> I, I, you, you pull, you were pulled into this by him mostly because I'd have pulled you in for something, but I don't know you as well as he does. Well, you pulled me into Redline because I like cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I pulled you for and a bikes and yeah. reason. I mean, it's only fair. I got, I dragged David into the whole Gundam. Fat man into the whole Gundam thing. Don't worry, I'll censor it out. And I drag him into drama and I'm in kicking and screaming. Uh, I, I think you should just leave it in because this just proves that we haven't done this in a while and I'm rusty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. I'm rusty. I'm Plus, I'm the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Joseph. (laughs) Hi, I'm Trisha. (laughs) Welcome to the rebranding of Otaku Tavern. We no longer do characters. I'm joking, obviously, and I'll probably be fired for saying this, but that's okay. (laughs) 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 Uh, Let's compose I mean, the only reason I I do them in the first place was originally because I didn't want to be associated with yeah. anything. Yeah. But now we've got something half decent that I don't mind being slightly associated with. <laughs> now. Why you see posts on my Insta about doing thumbnails for y'all? Yeah. Now, one thing about this series that is that it's a little jarring, just a little. And uh, it could confuse somebody who's not, you know, giving it their utmost attention. Yeah. And that is after episode one, when it jumps from the past back to the present, Mm -hmm. it's 
very difficult you to know when that the happens. The past. Well, no, it goes from the present to the past and then back to the present. Oh, yeah. it, it, right. When it goes from the present to the past, you know that it's a flashback. But then when it goes back from the past to the present, it's kind of jarring. Yeah, that final but, episode of season is jarring. Yeah. So, going from season one to season two might confuse some people, but... Yeah. Hmm, you'll figure it out. The first episode <laughs> yeah. of season one opens up with Yotaro still with his head on the mat, saying, I've been here for, like, three seasons! <laughs> I mean, season one opened up with Yotaro. Season two, with Yotaro. Guys, I finally did it. <laughs> I'm an apprentice. I, 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 like, like, yeah, like Fatman's. I just imagine the characters after that story is done being told. Like, we've been sitting here for three days. This is a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Is a th- is a twelve episode flashback. Yep. I'll say it. it's straight up a twelve episode flashback. And the first episode is like an hour long. Yeah. yeah. Which I absolutely loved. I I, I I I think I prefer season two over season one. Same. Because you get to know a lot more of the characters. Season one is good, but season two elevates. Mm. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. See, yeah, season one just focuses on uh, the old man and what brought him. What yeah, brought what him to this point? What brought him to the present? But with season two, you get to know a lot more of the characters. So yeah, season one learned, was. Go ahead. You also learned that the old man uh, lied a little. Spare Konatsu's feelings. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, if you look at the way their death is described in the first season, it's almost as fantastical as the stories he tells, right? Mm-hmm. By the time we got to season two, I kind of felt like season one was just kind of pointless at first. Until he told the Shinigami story, then it all made perfect sense. Like, then that made me realize why season one is a flashback. So, it all tied it together. Yeah. Oh, the final performance title. Yeah. Thematically? Yeah. And that that's something else that anime needs to start doing. <laughs> Pick an end date for your show and end it. Yeah. Some animes just go on way too long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but this 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 one was perfect. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It wrapped everything up in a nice little bow. Yeah. Consistent. It's yes, it's very consistent. Good. Yes, which is not, in my experience, that's not a common thing for me with anime because it, it's not common for me to come across a series that has no filler in it at all. It's super common for me, right? Yeah. I mean. Most of it. Yeah. Most of what I enjoy is short, sweet, to the point. I mean, if you got enough material to do multiple seasons of a show, then fine, that's great. But if you don't, then just don't try to push it beyond been the story you want to tell. Yeah, just... Because right. <laughs> that's how we get... That's how we get fuckfests like Naruto. <laughs> That's how we get Naruto Shippuden. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ooh. Ouch. Or the entire latter half of the first run of the show. That's like a hundred episodes of filler. Yes, this is how you get the Boo Saga. Hey, hey. hey. I, like I know you the like the Boo Saga. Okay, this is how you get Dragon Ball Super. Is that better? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hmm? Thank you for it's not also... saying GT because I also love that. Well, GT was good though. It's and... also how you get the first ever Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. The only good example of this. Oof. And, and they, uh, <laughs> that man will probably agree with me on this one. Is that GT, where it picks up after Dragon Ball Z left off, made more sense than what Super did. Yeah. Like it felt more. I don't know. It felt more natural. 
Yeah, a more natural one. It didn't feel forced. Yeah. But yeah, this this series will you have to give it as much attention as you can. Because well, you, it's somewhere not well. It's easy for the series to get to, to steal away your attention. Well, yes, but if you don't give it, if you start to trail off, you might miss things because this is a very like story heavy series. Yeah, like you need to, you might miss an important detail that just flies by. Pick stuff up on the second and third watch that I didn't even notice the first time. Right. But I- I was struggling not to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you were able to keep quiet about spoilers for an entire year. And people say I'm a blathermouth. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I... I... I've seen this entire series four or five times. Mm-hmm. Once with him only the first season. With well, him till- a single spoiler. Well, I've only watched a couple episodes of Doctor Who with Fat Man, and yet I... It was year. I watched it years before I met him, but I still could. Because <sighs> once I found out he liked Doctor Who, I was like, yeah, I have someone to talk about Doctor Who with. Uh, and then I couldn't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's something we might want to cover someday on this. Doctor Who? Like- you're like the lore master. Well, yeah. The lore master. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but if there are any Doctor Who fans in the audience, you'll get that joke. But, yeah. I, I wish there was more, though. Yeah? I, yeah, I do. I Like, I... It ended where it ended. That's fine with me. It's a and good it was ending. it was a good ending. But I would it's have loved actually, to see where the characters go from here. Thematically though, it's a perfect ending. Yeah. yeah. I I'd love to see more stories take place between the time skips. Yeah. But oh. I am quite satisfied where the story left off. Uh, and may, uh, maybe someday they'll do a spin-off where they follow, um... Konatsu? Oh, oh, I'd love that! Yeah. Konatsu's best girl. Yeah. Rakuto, you know, but from Neo Kichi's perspective... No! I, I'd i watch that. Seriously, though. <laughs> that may be... May... I do not care for her. Uh, maybe they'll do a spin-off where they, like... Explore how their family is bringing Rakugo to a younger generation or something. Yeah. That would be cool. I'd watch that. Mm. I mean, I'm a huge fan of theater in general. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I know how, why, how I originally came across this anime. How? Every season, I look at the upcoming anime, and mm-hmm. I pick out a couple shows by, like, Tate, by genre... Right. Mm-hmm. This had me sold just from the tags. I didn't read the description. It, it it was just sitting there with the tag Jose historical drama. Right. And I was just like, sign me the fuck up. <laughs> but yeah, I just straight up saw it sitting there in the list of like things and it was just like, oh my god, I'm watching this. Yeah. Are there any manga facts for this one? Well, Rakugo was written and illustrated by Haruko Kumota and consists of 10 volumes that ran from March to... Oh my god. 2010 from... to June 2016. Wow. Six years to release 10 volumes? Man, they took, it, it, he they took his time. Monthly. Yeah, that could be. Chapters. Oh, yes. Which is what they're fucking doing with Jojo Leon, and that's making me salty. <sighs> I'm pulling my hair out waiting for the next chapter of that time I get reincarnated as a slime. You know what I'm pulling my hair out? Chap- Radiation House. Oh. Which reminds me, Radiation House ad- 
anime adaptation one. <laughs> I've not heard of it, but I'm sure if you recommend it, it must be good. <laughs> no. Sometimes I... I like good stuff, you know this, and then other times I like... Absolute nuts. shit. <laughs> I... I think this is where our differences shine through, because I don't really read manga. Yeah. So, I'm pulling my hair out for Bill and Ted 3. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so, if there's one manga reckon I'm gonna have to ever do to you, it's Good Night. Right. It's what? Repeat that? Good Night. What's the other please? Good Night Poon Poon. Okay. That sounds weirdly dirty. <laughs> Good night, Poon Poon is a thing I really want to talk about sometime. Like, I scale- I, I want to make a Good Night Poon Poon episode, <laughs> but it, this would require Fat Man to read a manga. Right. What the uh, fuck is this? <laughs> Which part? Just pictures on Google. Of what exactly? Good, good night, Poon Poon. It's Poon Poon, what can I say? Oh, okay, My... this is creepy. <laughs> Weird. Define creepy. <laughs> Oh, which which one is it? Is it the Uncle Yuichi part? A lot. Is of it the faces? Imagery talking about gods. I love Poon Poon. I need to finish it. Okay then, for a later time. Yep. Please, please, God, Poon Poon one. Oh my. Because Poon Poon's also got gorgeous art. Absolutely gorgeous. Fucking Isaiano is a talented artist. Okay, back to Rakugo. Yes, Rakugo, which animation is unfortunately not its strong suit. I thought the animation was good. No, it, it's it's solid animation, but it's not gonna wow any. It's not winning anything for its animation. I. It's good. It's great for the show and detailed, which is good. But it's it's not what I'm trying to say. It's no. I'm no trying wow to think factor. of the hmm. No wow factor. There's only like one or two scenes that really blew it out of the park for visuals. I thought for what kind of story this yeah. anime was telling, art and animation were perfect. Quality. The story, the art and animation for the story being told was perfect. I don't know, I like the anime style for this series, because one, it doesn't use any CGI, which is becoming commonplace nowadays. Yeah. Well, and a little bit of CGI and you haven't noticed it. I don't think there was any in there. Mm-hmm. I don't remember there being any CGI. And if there was... That is a compliment to the show. Yeah, because they hit it well. And two, like, I'm glad for the story they were trying to tell, I'm glad they focused more on the story aspect and less on the art aspect. No, like... Because I'm okay with an anime looking bad as long as the story's good. <laughs> you know? My favorite anime is Naoki Urasawa's Mon. And do you know how that looks, Fat Man? Ooh. Yes, I do. A very nostalgic old anime art style. Like 80s? I'll send you a... Not exactly 80s, it, yeah. but... Oh, okay. Or, when did it come out? But all, all of the characters have very realistic faces. Oh, okay. Monster... The manga came out in 19... Serialized in 1991. Oh, we're talking about Monster. Well, from 1994 to 2004. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you you guys showed me clips from that. I thought the yeah, I thought the anime and that was fine too. Oh no, no, I was referring to I was referring to not the children's book scenes. Oh. Yeah. The children's book scenes are quite possibly the best. Place of animation monster has. 
next yeah. to the facial faces, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the like the visual expressions and the way the characters express emotion in the series. Other than that, it's sort of trying to think of the word old looking. Well, what some of my favorite animes are old looking. <laughs> All of your classic Gundam. My Trigun. Yeah. My Cowboy Bebop. My my Dragon Ball Z, you know. Like, like this is just how Monster B, dude. Mm-hmm. You see the thing I sent you? Oh, no, I didn't. Just down. Oh, yeah, this. This is like, this is like a late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. I like that art style. I I do too, but good god, if it's not the main character, some of them look... Okay. (laughs) They look like an oblivion. What happens if you hit random in oblivion? Oh god. (laughs) Now I'm having flashbacks. Yeah, now I'm having lots of flashbacks. (laughs) Yeah, man, I love monsters. I love Monster. I need to finish Poon Poon. So. But reading Poon Poon in public makes me deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm looking at you, the chapter in which Poon Poon masturbates for the first time. Oh my god. Or Why? the time when you follow his uncle as he fucks some chick. Anyway. <laughs> Back to Rock ago. <laughs> <laughs> Have either of you picked out your voice actor for the episode? Honestly, if there's any voice actor that stands out, it's oddly enough Miyokichi. Yeah. Even though I love Suke Roku, because his. I love the, like, how rattly Suke Roku sounds. Yeah. You know? Because he's just like. Oh. Uh, like uh, he's like the vi- vocal personification of every little <laughs> rolling. Yeah. Also, his, um, Tsukiro, who, who are you going to do for your voice, Kuga? I don't have one, because I was so focused on the story, I wasn't paying attention to that. <sighs> okay, so, here's a fun thing for you, Kuga. The Japanese voice of Spike Spiegel is Tsukiroku. Okay, I'm, I never watched Cowboy Bebop in Japanese, so... Neither have I. Yeah. But, I'm just saying that because they used someone fucking famous as shit. And and some of you anime purists might think that's sacrilege, but just watch anime how you want and enjoy it. Exactly. Yeah. Unless it's ghost stories. <laughs> <laughs> or easy <laughs> Or, unless it's a Dragon Ball Z. Never watch that in Japanese. Hey, I, I got used to it. enjoy it in Japanese. Well, the, the, but... There are just some things that... The, watching it in Japanese would just be weird to me. Like right. Gundam, or Dragon Ball Z, or... Like, a lot of the animes I grew up with. That's nostalgia talking, my dude. Well... That is also an understanding thing. I can follow the story yeah. better in English than I can in Japanese. I've watched far too much anime. Ugh. Like, you don't have... You have no okay. idea. It's gotten to some anime I can look down and understand. It, uh, it is a bit weird watching Dragon Ball without Chris Sabat or Sean Schemmel. Yeah, see, oh, I, yeah. Can't, I can't do it. Unless Goku sounds like Goku and Vegeta sounds like Vegeta, I can't do it. Vegeta. I'm Nepa. But but I, I'm I'm actually kinda glad we didn't like if there is a dub of this, I'm glad we didn't watch that because this No. The, you should watch this in Japanese, honestly. I'm gonna straight up say this. If there is a Rakugo dub it is sacrilege. <laughs> right? It, 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 it delves so much into the storytelling culture of Japan that to do it in English would just be... It would be distracting. I say that as someone who listens to English Rakugo, too. 
Yeah. I guess and just... I like it. It depends on the person telling the story. Yeah. Like, like the person who ran this Rakugo podcast, like, Itatsu. Yeah. His, the way he told the stories was great, but, mm. but his, he was sort of quieter, more reserved, like, Yakumo. Right. Gotcha. But also some stories he didn't remember as well, so there were some pauses, because he was doing it from memory. Right. Because mm-hmm. most of the time the show, they a podcast where they talked about Rakugo and Japan and stuff. Yeah. And occasionally did a story. So it was pr- pretty distracting at times. But when they did do a full story, he had my attention. Right. So, Ruga. Yo. Uh, Tomozaku Seki, the voice of Taro. Rakugo. Which one is Taro again? Yotaro, our fool. Oh, right, yeah, okay. The dipshit. Yeah. The loving dipshit. Sorry, I didn't hear the what, I, I just heard Taro, so I was, like, confused. <sighs> is also the voice of Joman Kashu. Then the Japanese version. Yes. Of Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Right. Yes. Domon Kashu, the pilot of the Shining Gundam and the Burning Gundam, or if you live in Japan, that would be... Well, the Burning Gundam is the God Gundam. Yeah. I don't remember what they call the Shining Gundam in Japanese. Miyokichi voices Hello Kitty. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I grew up watching Hello Kitty. I've never seen it. Mio Kichi voices Hello Kitty and Haruko in one season of... But one of those is sacrilege. And that's changing Haruko's voice to someone experienced. Yeah. <laughs> Gotaro's voice actor also plays Isaac from... Isaac. Jack Jewel. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Remind me. From all of Gundam Seed. Oh, right. Isaac Jewel. Yes, okay. Yep. Uh, Fat Man, I've got some uh, a little surprise for you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much did you enjoy Naruto? Ah, uh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> how about this? Do you like Gara? Fucking love Gara. The voice actor for fucking our homeboy, our homie, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, Yakumo. Oh my god, are you really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, it's Gara. <laughs> yeah. Gara. <laughs> oh, that's great. Are you okay? I am always fine. Oh, fuck, guys. Did we ever talk about our favorite Barakugo stories? Yeah, we did. I thought we did. Maybe before we started, yeah. I think. <clears throat> but to answer your question, Fenris... Um, how much do I like Naruto on a scale from 1 to 10? It would be about a negative 20. <laughs> oh, come on! Hurts, I rate I... Naruto at least a 4. Sorry, I can't stand Naruto. I never will. <laughs> I'm a shameless fan of Rock Lee and my guy. <laughs> the original series is probably up there in the 6 or 7 range, maybe 8. As it went on further into filler territory, it heavily dropped off, and then Shippuden kind of ruined it for me. Shippuden <laughs> did ruin it. The, 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 only... the, the thing that turned me off to Naruto the most was its original opening. <laughs> oh, yeah? It didn't match the tone of the show at all. Mm-hmm. And once I started watching it, it was just like... Like, I don't know, I guess I was just at a point in my life where I didn't need more of that type of anime, I guess. I, like, I, I don't like Naruto, sorry guys. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like Bleach either. Naruto is what got me into drawing my own comics. I, I'm not good at it, so I'm not a drawer, but... Mm-hmm. Neither am I. 
I loved sketching out comics in my daily plan. And my friends would have competitions with each other, doing Naruto hand signs the fastest. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yes, um, I remember those days. <laughs> making uh, paper shuriken. Oh, yeah. Good times. One of my friends thinking they could actually fight me with fic with fictional jutsus. <gasps> <laughs> Big brain. <laughs> I'm not shooting Kamehameha. Oh, wait, that's a different episode where we talk about this shit. Everyone who has watched Dragon Ball has sometime in their life tried to do a Kamehameha. I know I have. <laughs> As have I. Yep. I even tried to do Final Flash. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried Gallic Gun, not... Not, uh... As recently I, as a few years ago. I, I even did, uh... Oh god, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. It's been years, but the, uh... Masenko? Hmm? Masenko? Uh, yes. Gohan's move. Did first I have had... Piccolo? Yeah, first I had to figure out how to say it. Masenko! Ha! <laughs> god, fucking drink. Oh my guys. <laughs> <laughs> also... Why, why is all- why do all of my favorite anime end up getting dark as shit? That's this just, is a trend I've noticed. That's just what you enjoy watching. I like dark storytelling. Yeah. I prefer dark storytelling. <laughs> well, let, let me just throw- let me just go through the list real quick. Angel Beats, They're All Dead. Ah, oh, fuck, we're doing that next. Yes. Because it's a special time in my life. It's a special month. Yep. And Angel Beats is oddly relevant to my special month. <laughs> Which reminds me, uh, that special time is a week from tomorrow. Great. Birthday, birthday the Electric Boogaloo is in next, the week after next. I'll let Psycho know later. Okay. Wait, tomorrow is your birthday, or next week is your birthday? Hmm. No, my birthday's in August. Well, then why are you saying birthday? I said birthday to the Electric Boogaloo. Uh, okay, but I took I that as it's your birthday, <laughs> so I don't know what we're talking about here. <laughs> I was dying. Oh. Until I got an organ transplant. Right, 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 right. And that was the day I got my surgery, home flight. I'll probably make a cake or something. <laughs> Drink water. My birthday is next month. Oh, nice. Um, Gonna pick a special gun in the anime. Also, I admit I am completely ignorant on Gundam. <laughs> as for your earlier statements. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought mm. Gundam was just giant robot anime? No, it's more than that. That's what a lot of people think. But then again, my love of giant... I don't like giant robot anime. It's just <sighs> You are so into anime. How can you not have seen... How could you not like Gundam? I don't get that. I'm a huge fan of action. Did you start with Gundam Wing? Because if you did, then I understand. That's a common I mistake. <laughs> much Gundam. <sighs> I'm just not a big fan of giant robots and space. Oh yeah, that's the thing. It's the space. I, I don't. As a science, I, as a science fiction fan, as a huge science fiction nerd, everything you're saying is just foreign to me. <laughs> I, I'm not a huge fan of space, but one of my favorite video games is Space Station 13. Uh. Which I would love for Fat Man to allow me to do an episode on Space Station 13. Someday. Someday he'll let me talk about that ma majesty of a game. <laughs> yeah. Do you know about it, Kruger? Yes, I know about Space Station 13. <laughs> It's beautiful. I've never played it, but I know about it. I play it at least a couple times a week. <laughs> this is a tangent. Yeah, it is. Moving on. Well, what... What, what, hmm? what else is there to cover, though? Didn't we cover uh, everything? Didn't we do... 
we keep tangenting before we say our favorite story. Well, I don't have one, so... Oh. <laughs> That's all you guys. Story mm-hmm. that began and ended the series. Ginigami? Ginigami. I mean, that would probably be my pick, too, just because it's so tied into the series, narratively, yeah. It's it's chilling. Especially, especially... Yotaro's rendition? Yotaro's rendition, and the last time Yakumo did it. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, that's... That right there is one of my favorite moments in the show. My favorite... My favorite story is Hogan Cole, which is the one about the prisoner being locked alone, being right. unable to message his love. Yeah. Which is exceptionally relevant to the story, too. Yeah. Because I like how all of the stories told were relevant to the characters telling them. For mm. part. Yeah. Right? yeah. May I suggest something? What? I just had this idea. We tend to go on tangents a lot when we do yeah. these. Maybe we should have a show where we all just get together and just talk about anime in general instead of something specific. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun as shit, right? Ooh! Yeah. I'm gonna do that sometime. Like, just like a general discussion type show. That's why I like shit like, oh, gather around the campfire and talk about people's favorite anime. Or their favorite mm. opening. Yeah. Which reminds me, my favorite opening is the one for Rakugo Season 2. Yeah. Let's talk about the openings. Bait. He did. Uh, openings? I thought there was only one. For the first season as well. Yeah, the songs. I, I thought they were... I thought they were both the same. <laughs> no. Because I only remember the one that David likes so much. Or fat man likes so much. Well, that one's the recogn- that one's the memorable one. Though I personally think that one's more themat. First one's more thematic in the for the second season, and the second one's more thematic for the first season. That's weird. I don't remember the first season at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it's- that's a okay. I like it. Well, it- it's like with um, Iron Blooded Orphans. Once we got to the opening for season two. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. Fat Man, do you remember the name of it? Raise Your Flag? No, not Raise Your Flag. Um, it was like mid-season two. <coughs> Unless that is Raise Your Flag, but I thought Raise Your Flag was the first season. Uh, shoot. Yeah, no lie, Iwama no Shinigami is genuinely a banger of a song. <laughs> Oh yeah, Raise Your Flag was the first season. Yeah, what was the second season? Um, that's not it. <laughs> uh, there was Raise Your Flag by Man with a Mission. There was Orphans No Namida. Uh, Survivor. I think Survivor may be the one. You- yes, I think that is the one I'm thinking of. Once I heard that, I completely forgot the other openings because that one became my default favorite. Yeah, that happened. Oh no, so. Orphans no, Namida is the ending thing. Yeah. So. Oh no, I can't remember. Oh well. But, you know, like, I remember the the opening for season two of Go so distinctly that I don't remember the rest of them. <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> Openings one and two of Shogun Roku Rakugo Shinju are called. Uh, Ah, oh, fuck, I can't pronounce these even. Urashi Shinju? And Imawa no Shinigami. Shin- Imawa no Shinigami. Yeah. They're both sung by Megumi Ayashibara. Oh, they're both performed by the same artist? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. I Shinji didn't know that. He's voice actor. No, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's impressive. <sighs> She's got some pipes. I'm... I'm getting goosebumps as we speak, thinking about that second opening. It is my favorite. I yeah. mean, it's just straight up great. You you showed the second opening to me a year ago, after we finished the first Rock Go recording. Yeah. And I cried the first time I saw it. 
no context for the show, but it's just it it's very foreshadowing of the end of Yakimo's life. <laughs> it's also both openings are foreshadowing as hell. One more or less foreshadows what we already know in season one. Yeah. Mm. But as far as I'm concerned, this proves my point that as more specifically with the second opening to the second or the opening of the second season, because I don't really remember the first one, but enough with anime doing like, you know, pop radio rock music, like experiment more. You know, like this one was like jazz. I mean, I like pop genres, dude. Like, not gonna lie, my favorite openings have many, many genres of music. Yeah, all the animes I've ever seen pop. rock and roll and pop, pop music, and they don't really venture outside that much. So this was this was a breath of fresh air hearing like jazz music and. <laughs> One of my favorite openings of all time was straight up composed by some of the original creators. Mm. <laughs> cough, cough, clan ad. <laughs> and Barakamon's OP is just straight up one of my favorite songs, like being yeah. one of oh. the things complained about, the generic y sounding rock. <laughs> yeah. Well, all, even though I'm like getting burnt out on the whole pop and rock music being an anime thing, I will say that the ending theme for uh, for Death Note got me into Maximum the Hormone, which has become yes. like one of my favorite metal bands. In terms of there's another OP that makes me think of the not-so-poppy vibes, because you like jazzy openings, it seems. Well, I just like I, I like them to experiment more. It doesn't necessarily yeah. need to be jazz, but yeah. That's well, one of the reasons why I like And Yet the Town Moon, which is a very weird anime, by the way. Mm. We're gonna have to talk about it sometime, but basically it's just a funky, it's a somewhat funky jazz song. <coughs> yeah. About people wanting to hang out at a place. Yeah, see that that's like and going downtown and stuff. <laughs> the, 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 there's not enough of that in mainstream anime. <laughs> you want more of that? Yes, I want more. I want more musical experimentation in anime. Oh shit! You like you want stuff like Fully Cooly in general? Oh boy! <laughs> what Fully Cooly is a glorified music video. I'm gonna straight up say that. Mm. It it if you watch it for anything, I mean I say this as someone who genuinely enjoys the plot. Right. Plot. Shut up, fat man. You were just being a negative Nancy. All right. Sure. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, they're just not experimental. No, nah, like, there just needs to be more experimentation with the music in mainstream anime. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like a lot of openings in mainstream anime, but they all just seem to be, like, rock songs. Um, there's an opening that's relatively recent that's sort of experimental. Oh, well, okay. It's for the anime Take Your Eyes Off Izuken, which is... Oh, that one you made showed by... me the other day. Made yeah, me which is... Jump out of my chair. With interest? Yes, that looks amazing we're gonna just be, from the opening. We're going to be watching it, by the way, dude. Absolutely. There is one anime I would like to do. Yeah? Since okay. you guys put the idea in my head, and now I can't get it out, and that is Beck. Beck? Oh yeah, Ooh. no, you'll be coming for us with Beck. Okay. When we get there. Hmm. Okay. I... Easy breezy. I, 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 I... Hmm? Go ahead. Speaking of take your eyes off Izuken, I have that OP stuck in my goddamn head. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything more to cover with Haraku. There isn't, really. Well, I did want to touch on the opening a little bit more. I can't oh, okay. well, then go ahead. remember much of the first opening like you. I do. <laughs> but just... The subtle changes in it. Very focused on 
heavily focused on Yakimo. Yeah. In the water, going under the going under the water, like drowning or reaching out for Yotaro. Jumping off of a cliff, which yeah. was foreshadowing of when he tried to jump off that bridge in yeah. season two. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of the second opening, sorry to cut you off, David. Uh, fat man. Fuck! Fuck it. Anyway. Uh, so, there was one episode we were watching, and we were watching the opening, and you pointed out that one of the character's eyes were red. Yes. Okay. At the yes. very yeah. and near the end of the opening, Yakumo's dead friend, Tsukiroku, reaches his hand over his shoulder and exposes Yakumo's ribcage under his jacket. And mm-hmm. most of the time, Tsukiroku's eyes are brown, his natural eye color. But in a couple of the openings, it openings in which the episode has Yakumo almost dying or seeing ghosts, Tsukiroku's mm-hmm. eyes turn red. And the first time I noticed that, I freaked out. That- oh, so so did I. It creeped me out because I don't. I I'm hoping that was intentional. That seriously spooked me. Also, for one of the, for the episode where we learned the truth. All of the, you know how the record's Konatsu? Well, how the record is usually Miyokichi? Yeah, mm. there were other pictures of her. Yeah, yeah, it got swapped out with just regular pictures of Miyokichi and just pictures of Miyokichi at her best. Oh, yeah. I didn't and notice that. Beautiful. Or, it swapped out just her casual stuff, too. Elegant. Beautiful, sensual outfits. Yeah. See, this, this this is why you watch an anime series like this more than once, because I didn't notice that at all. <laughs> no, this is why you watch an anime with an artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but if you watch it more than once, you'll probably pick up on those things. I noticed that the first time. <laughs> I did not. I noticed but then the again, second time. I'm yeah. a weirdo who looks at little details. So do I, usually, but some of them just, I'm focused on something else. So. Song is chilling. The song's straight up good, too. Yakumo in the center of a record, a spinning record, surrounded by all of the people that he's had an influence in over his life. And, and how, they, how he turns their back on him. Yeah. yeah th- th- this is very much an anime about life. And- yeah, it is. So, how about episode 11? What about it? Episode 11 of which season? Of season 2, in which the entirety of it takes place in the afterlife. Oh, that oh was yeah! Good that was... Yeah, that was a good episode. I liked that. Well, there are multiple reasons why I like that episode, because it, it's funny, it's heartbreaking it's like, at times. Okay, like, let's laugh about all of the horrible stuff that happened to us in life, because we're dead now, so it doesn't matter. No, not only that, but they go to Yoshiwara, which is a very famous red light district. Yeah. And so, Suke Roku's like, Oi, we, we didn't get to do this in life, let's do this in death. Yeah. And and he just, in his best kabuki voice, is just, like, talking about how as, as Suke Roku enters the enters gate. the gates... A rain of pipes descended, denoting how many girls wanted to bang him. <laughs> uh, and then Yakum just brushes him off, saying, oh, they're here for my wallet. Yeah, not you. <laughs> <laughs> and then fucking Miyokichi grabs Suke Roku by the ear and goes, There's my fucking way about husband! <laughs> I'd say in any other character-driven drama, it would just show the characters die, and that's it. You'd be left feeling sad and, I guess, incomplete at the story? Yeah. Yeah. But it wouldn't have... have completed their character. Right. This was a very interesting resolution Send to off. that. Yeah. And instead of feeling sad, it's very... Joyful. Yeah. It's... It... Okay, so... I'm gonna Is talk it... a little bit about Angel Beats. Batman real quick. Yeah. Just like, be, 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 before you do that, yeah. I, I, is it joyful or is it more bittersweet? 
bittersweet. Because I took it as more bittersweet myself, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> well, there was also the joy of what, like, when they get to the old theater and they're like talking about this special seat in the house. That oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That part was joyful. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking more like the tone. Yeah. For, throughout most of it was joyful. Yeah. There, there were a lot of bittersweet moments, though. It was mo- There were a lot of bittersweet moments, but the overall tone of that episode was happiness and joy. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how they accepted their fate. Right. Which Yakimo leads me into... Reconciling with Hirokuchi. Yeah. And that was one of my favorite moments. Like, my actually my favorite moment in that episode's when... I don't know, maybe I've just always seen those moments as more bittersweet than joyful. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's just... I have a weird view on death. And Matsuda being the... Yeah. Fairy near to ferry him across the Sanzu River. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matsuda, oh, okay. Matsuda showed up briefly to ferry Yakumo to the other side. Oh, okay, that's cool. I Yeah, I missed that part. As as Yakumo told one last story too. That, that that that's one thing the series does, especially for me. You're so focused on the story and everything going on that those little details that are in the background you'll miss. <laughs> like how the final story fuck Yakumo tells isn't one of his doom and gloom or saucy stories. Mm-hmm. It's his children's story that he yeah. really wanted to tell his grandson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Cause... It's not. Oh. It's not his famous not stories his... being. Yeah, it's none of his famous ones. It's right. a typical type of storytelling. It's when just he was him... in the afterlife and in that theater and the cushion that lets. The, uh, the person you want to tell the story to most appear. Mm-hmm. Old, uh, wh- what's that Rakugo's name? What, the kid's name? No, he, he told oh, the it to story? Shinosuke, but... Jugen. Jugen. The kid with the really I love Jugen. Oh, um, uh, by the way, just for anybody listening to this, uh, don't mistake us going on tangents as being disinterested in something, we do this all the time. (laughs) Talk. I have genuinely have ADHD and blather on about basically anything. Right. And follow every train of thought in my mind. Same. But, yeah, it's just, he told the one story he wanted to tell his grandson. Mm -hmm. Or kid, depending on which theory you subscribe to. Right. I, I, I don't have ADD or ADHD or any of that, but I just like the conversation to go where it wants oh, yeah. to go. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So. The freeform style podcast. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is why I love doing this. Did I ever finish my Angel Beats? No, you didn't. But I'm going to be doing that next week. If you want to hold on to that until then, because... Oh, I'm going to fucking forget it. I'll write it down somewhere, because we're almost at two hours now. Okay. Yeah. Art and animation I love. Very fitting of the story. It's great because as the storytellers are telling their stories, you can tell exactly what character they're portraying based on their facial features and expressions at the time. Yeah, exactly. And the voice actors in this were masterful. Playing yeah, they, yeah no, they picked top talent. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the attention to detail in this series is uh-huh. amazing. You, you, get, you get some episodes, some parts where they're choking on birds. Yeah, and the thing that I, I love about the, the way they approach attention to detail in this series is you... N- like, it's just enough. Like, it's not so much that it becomes distracting, but it's not so little that it's vague. It's like that happy middle ground there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this has become one of my favorite anime that I've ever Same. seen. 
Yeah. And has seriously piqued my interest in Japanese theater. Yeah. It's my third favorite anime. <sighs> I don't... I feel, I feel bad putting it at number three. <laughs> With all the Gundam I've watched, I don't think I could rank my favorite anime, but this is up there. Yeah. I, I normally oh. don't have... I'm not able to rank past, like, five, because after that stage, it's... Oh, 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 after five, five or... Th one, my rank one is tied for a couple shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because my, my number one favorite is either Planet or Monster. Yeah. I and, mean, I could... Mm? Go ahead, sorry. And Planet is, objectively speaking... Not as near as perfect and phenomenal as Monster Story. Right. I could tell you my favorite movie of all time, but that would be Alien. But I haven't that seen Alien. I got it. Yeah, and I don't know how. I wouldn't put me. It wouldn't put me to sleep. Well, I should say that it's really a tie between Alien and John Carpenter's The Thing as my favorite movie of all time, but. Have you ever seen Martyrs? Have I ever seen what? Martyrs. No, I don't think so. Don't. Also, it's a really solid French horror film, but don't oh. watch it. Okay. Unless you have a strong stomach. Oh, I can handle pretty much anything. Uh, it makes Shaw, Shaw look like Disney, dude. I've seen way worse horror movies than Saw oh. could ever hope to be. <laughs> it's up there with um Solo and... <clears throat> Uh, fuck. Solo, which is the 128 Days of Sodom movie. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's wrap Move up. on! Do either of you have anything to add on to the end of this? No. No. Alright. Go and watch it. Fucking yes. watch it. Please yes. watch it. We love it. <laughs> we want to share it with you. Please, this needs more attention. Yeah. I often try to bring attention to lesser-known shows here, yeah. or shows that aren't brought up in the wider discourse of the anime community. Uh -huh. That's why we started this podcast. Yep. Yeah. I started this because the other one wouldn't let me talk about Rakugo, <laughs> essentially. Well... Right? Yeah. I straight up started this because I want watch Rakugo with someone not me. Well, you can watch Showa Roku Rakugo Shinju on Amazon, Crunchyroll, and Verve. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well, in the comments below and on our Discord. The Night Parade has now come to an end. Thank you for a wonderful first year. Later! Bye, Bye everybody! Next week, Angel Beats! Ah! I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna die. I don't know if I'll be there, but see you when I see you. <laughs> <laughs>